What's up, my friends? Welcome back to another video. And today we're specifically going to be taking a look at a big band chart. Um, if you know me, you know that I love my big band sometimes. And uh, specifically, Christmas music is uh, a style really that lends itself so well to jazz and big band in general. And so today we're going to be taking a look at a chart that was uh, done by Tony Guerrero. Uh, Guerrero. Uh, Tony, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name here, but uh, I wanted to share this chart because it is so uh, catchy and I just love the arrangement. And we can learn a lot from professional scores, to be honest. Uh, Tony is very kind to actually include his full score here in the, in the, uh, in the video for the play along. But uh, I kind of want to talk about the, the simplicity behind it. If you can really take a look at the chart here, you see there's a lot of rest going on, right? So we're going to talk about the power of just letting one section sing by itself and then what adding two sections together can really do, um, two or more sections essentially, and how that all works together. Before we really get into that though, I want to give you a free guide called Three Secrets to Unlocking That Joyous Big Band Sound. And it was kind of inspired by charts like this actually, where um, you know there's a lot of pieces of music that just sound really resonant and really big and very joyful and happy. Lots of big band charts that do that. And it's because they follow a few core principles. Um, and I want to share those with you in this free guide. There are kind of like some techniques that you can really take advantage of to really make your charts sing out without feeling muddy and sounding kind of drab and all that because um, I think an amateur mock-up or an amateur arrange, uh, amateur arrangement tends to kind of fall flat a lot of the times and it doesn't really speak that well in the instrument. So I want to give you those three tips that I think are really essential. So if you click the link below in the box, it'll take you straight there. It's totally free and it's my gift to you for watching this video. So let's kind of check out the beauty of this song here. All right, so let's dive into the arrangement. Let's have a listen through the shout chorus. If you wanna to listen to this whole thing, you certainly can on Tony's channel, but let's have a listen. All right, let's stop there. So it has a very like Count Basie, um, semi Nestico type of style to it, which is really my favorite type of arrangement because it's so melodic, it's so clean, and the melody is just so clear. But you'll notice here at the beginning of the shout course, you have the saxophones taking the reins, right? Literally. Take, um, but uh, but let, here, let's have a quick, more quick lesson here. So the drums are kind of leading us in. And then the alto sax one, da, 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 very, very clear. And whenever you have the saxes just playing by themselves, it has a very joyful and cheery sound, right? Um, they, you know, saxes are are very very emotional instruments, especially for like jazz music and um, especially in this type of thing. I just love hearing a good sax soli. Then, as a little response in the second half of the phrase, Tony decided to switch to the trombones because probably he wanted to save the trumpets for the next declamatory section, for the da 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 da, right? So the trombones respond here with a beautiful syncopated type of rhythm, very swung. Now the trumpets come in layered with the trombones and that really, uh, it kind of like has two purposes. Number one, it just increases the overall strength and like resonance of the ensemble. But secondly, it allows the higher line to really speak out. So the trumpets can go at least an octave higher, you know, than what's written here or than the trombones, you know? So using the trumpets in that way is very, very common to bring out that melody in higher register. And you see, as the trumpets and trombones tail off their phrase, the saxophones kind of interact and come in, uh, you know, leading into that phrase, right? Now they're going to have their soli again. So then, you know, it makes sense to kind of pick up where the brass left off. This almost feels a little bit improvisatory. Now trombones take over that melody while saxes do their thing. Also love how this is written in unison. Dun, 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 dun. You get a very clear sense of what that melody sounds like. So using a bit of unison here and there, and then interact interspersing that with uh, you know fully voiced harmonies, 
is very effective as well. And then the saxophones here, that's kind of in unison as well, right? Um, and then the reason like these are in unison is because here we're going to get fully voiced chords in all the different instruments. We're going to get lots of different voices, you know? So it makes sense for the unison to kind of approach that. And then we get that contrast, not only with the piano or quieter dynamics going into the fortissimo, right? Uh, it just sounds beautiful. But anyway, let's have a listen to this, the rest of this. So everyone playing together. Notice here as well, the actual rhythm is very, very simple. Straight quarter notes, and then da 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 right? So this, the, the more instruments you have, the more possibilities there are of things being out of time together, right? But one, these are professional musicians, and two, um, Tony kind of takes care of this by going with a regularly, uh, pretty simple rhythm, you know? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or one and two and three and four, and right? A little bit of swung there. But having just straight chord notes is super simple. So it allows the instrumentalist to play together without risking, uh, you know, being disaligned with one another or unaligned with one another. And the saxophones take over because they're usually quieter instruments. So we give them a chance to shine, whereas the trombones give a little bit of syncopation between the beats. And then trumpets come back in, finishes the phrase, saxophones again, and trombones come in to finish as well. I think something that we do a lot as amateur arrangers is we tend to overuse the trumpets because they they're always so powerful they can play the, they can play super high and so we the saxes and the trombones are usually underappreciated especially if we're not brass or horn players you know we just want to hear that high stuff all the time so less is typically more you see in the shout chorus the only place where the trumpet is really playing is in three different sections so one here right in the middle there two and three. And they're uh, they're really only playing in the loudest sections as well. Whereas the trombones and the saxes are playing much more. They have their own solis and stuff, right? And notice also the trumpets are usually combined with the trombones as well, as you can see. So four trumpets are usually combined with four trombones. And a typical voicing method you can do is like, let's say closed voicing or a power voicing where you have the lead melody in the trumpet, then you have the, the chord voices distributed below. Um, the fourth trumpet can either double the lead melody an octave below or just do another chord tone. Then you can take those four voices and copy them down into the trombones, which definitely can work, um, to just to fill up the low end there. And then the saxes can be used to kind of fill in the empty spaces or the harmonic holes. But generally, you wouldn't see the trumpets written uh, by themselves without any trombones or saxes in there because you do need that low end, especially in a 2D section. So yeah, that's kind of a little insight into what I think uh, Tony's approach was to writing the shout chorus. I just really appreciate how he started relatively simple here with that uh, saxophone soli, little break here, and then the trombones come in. They have their own space because they're kind of lower. They're not as easily heard if they're not playing too high. And then the trumpets can come in and just layer on top to play that higher melody. They kind of die down to let the saxophones again take over. Then the trombones come in, so it's like step two energy level going up a little bit. And then when the trum trumpets come back in, then everything is like full force. That's why he wrote fortissimo here. And so it's very declamatory. Um, and then it kind of just rounds off here. You can see it goes back diminuendo. So anyway, love this chart. Love, uh, love the overall arrangement. Thank you, Tony, for uh, writing this together, putting this together. A beautiful take on a standard. I really, uh, really enjoy it. So yeah, if you were watching this, if you have any questions about it, please let me know in a comment below. And uh, I'd love to, love to kind of discuss um, this type of arranging with you if you're interested. And again, if you don't have that free guide called Three Secrets to a Joyous Big Band Sound, I definitely want to give that to you. It kind of takes, again, three really fundamental techniques that I personally like to use in my charts um, to kind of result in a more open and sonora sound that lets the chart just really sing and just sound beautiful. So I want to give that to you absolutely free. If you just click the link in the description box below, it'll take you straight there. And again, it's my gift to you for watching this video. So thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next one and take care. Bye-bye.